Hi viewers, in this video class we are going to discuss RC phase shift oscillator. Generally, oscillator circuits consist of two uh, elements, one is amplifier, second one is feedback network. So these two circuits combinedly called as oscillator, one more condition is it has to satisfy the uh, 360 degree or zero degree phase shift. Means if the amplifier produces a 180 degree phase shift, then the feedback network also have to produce 180 degree so that the entire uh, phase shift becomes 360 or 0 degree. Okay, here in RC phase shift oscillator, there is an amplifier used this inverting amplifier, uh, common emitter amplifier. And uh, for feedback network, we are going to use three RC networks. So each RC network produces 60 degree phase shift. So 60 degree into three networks becomes as 180 degree phase shift. So the remaining 180 degree phase shift is produced by the amplifier because it is a common emitter amplifier. Generally common emitter amplifier produces an output signal which is 180 degree phase shift of the input signal. Okay, now we see the circuit diagram. Okay, this is the circuit diagram. This black color marked uh, circuit is nothing but the amplifier, common emitter amplifier. So these two resistors are um, biasing resistors. Here we have used the voltage divider bias. So this is a load resistance RC, this is emitter resistance and bypass capacitor. So remaining this uh, violet color marked uh, circuit is nothing but the <coughs> feedback network. So we have uh, one, three RC networks. This is first one, this is second, the third one is the capacitor and the resistor. So we have framed three RC networks so that it produces the 180, uh, 180 degree phase shift at the input side. In this circuit, this common emitter amplifier, so it produces an output signal that is 180 degree out of phase of input input signal. So this signal is fed back through the feedback network, which consists of three RC networks. So after um, crossing this RC network, we will get a one more 60 degree. So 180 plus 60 degree. That is equal to 240 degree. So after crossing this RC network, again here I can get 240 plus 60 degree. That is equal to 300. So after crossing this R and C networks, I can get here 300 plus 60. That is equal to 360 degree. So uh, like this, this circuit satisfies your requirement of 360 degree phase shift. Okay. So this is the um, construction of RC network. So I have to complete the circuit diagram. Here I have left open. I have to connect here. Similarly, we have to connect to the ground also. So here it is connected to the output signal. So next we see what will be the value of R and C. So from this diagram I can say it is a small single state C amplifier. It is feedback network. The R value. So we have three R and uh, two, three C, that means three R C networks. So what is the R value should be? The R value should be equal to R3 plus HIE. Means whatever the value you are putting here in R3, that should be added with the HIE of the transistor. So the HIE values are produced in the data sheet of your transistor. So along with, you have to design a R3 resistor. So the summation of R3 and HIE should be the R, that R should be replaced in the every RC networks. Okay. So see here, first we have to find the R by using the R3 plus HIE, that R should be used in R1 and R2. So R1 and R2 means this feedback networks R1 and R2, don't confuse this, I can replace the name as RA and RB here. So these are all biasing resistors, don't bother about this, we have to, we are assigning these values for this type of uh, resistors okay so here we have to consider one more step is nothing but the phase shift produced by each rc section should be equal to pi is equal to tan inverse of 1 by omega c and r so uh, how to fix the 60 degree phase shift in rc network means using this uh, calculation we have to um, select the particular value of either c or r by adjusting these values i can uh, get the 60 degree phase shift in each rc network we get into the analysis part so analysis part means uh, finding the frequency of oscillation and as well as the condition for oscillation. So first we uh, draw the equivalent circuit for the RC phase oscillator. 
So here uh, the base collector emitter. So this is trans uh, transistor section along with RC. So this is our feedback circuits. So here uh, between collector and emitter, I have drawn the current generator. Between base and emitter, we have the input impedance HIE short circuit in input impedance. So the IB is the same current because uh, here we are we are not giving an input signal. Oscillator uh, operates without the input signal. It uses the feedback signal as the input signal. Hence the feedback uh, current, the R3, I3 current, the third section current is equal to the base current. Okay, now I am going to um, convert this current uh, generator into voltage source, current source into voltage source. Okay, I have converted here the um, parallel RC resistor will become as a series and it is converted into voltage source. Okay, so now we have uh, three current paths I1, I2, I3. I am going to use the Kirchhoff's voltage law in each circuit, uh, each um, current loop. Okay, so keeping the circuit, I am going to use the KVL for loop 1, loop 2 and loop 3. For loop 1, I am going to use KVL. So I am uh, starting from here, this node. So the I1 current flows through RC. So this is the end, I am marking with minus. So minus I1 RC, then minus I1 into, uh, this is the reactance, 1 by J omega C. Then this current flows through this resistor, hence I put minus I1 R. But uh, here we have a opposite current of I2. So the I2 is opposite to this I1. I make it as plus I2 R. Then finally this current flows through the voltage source. So this will be minus HFE RC IB is equal to 0. So I uh, rearrange this uh, expression into a simplified form by multiplying with minus symbol. Okay. Now I might multiply with minus. So uh, my, the minus term will get made as a plus term and the plus term made as minus term. Okay, now I have to segregate uh, I1 term, I2 term and I3 term. So here I have I1, these three uh, terms contains I1. So you take it as common, I1. So RC plus 1 by J omega C plus R into I1. So I2, for I2 only one term is there. I have written like minus R into I2 plus HFE RC IB. So the IB is nothing but equal to the I3 current. So I am replacing IB with I3. So this becomes as equation 1. Next, I am uh, taking the uh, second uh, loop. So, in this loop, I am starting from here. I complete the entire circuit. So, first, I have the uh, reactance component. So, minus I2 into 1 by J omega C. Then, I come here, minus I2 R. So, since we have a uh, outside current is I3, that is opposite to this. I can place it as plus I3 R minus. Again, I come back to here. Here also, I am having a R component. So, minus I2 R. So, that is opposite to the outside current I1. So, plus I1 R. Here also I am making multiplying with minus so that the minus term becomes as plus and uh, plus term becomes as minus. Okay. Now here all the terms are um, changed. Now I am segregating into I1, I2, I3. So here only I have the I1 term. So I am bringing to the forward uh, next I2 term. I2 term is available here and uh, here three, in three places. So I am making it as common. So I2 term uh, in three places it is available, I make it as common and I3 is available in only one place, I am uh, placing here, it becomes as equation 2. In the third third section I am going to take for loop 3 using KVL, I can start from here. So here also I have the first um, capacitance reactance term, so minus I3 into 1 by J omega C, then I3 R, then again I3 R and uh, opposite current is I2 R. Okay. So this uh, only we have four terms here, so next step I am multiplying with minus and um, minus terms becomes as positive and positive becomes as minus so finally i am rearranging for uh, i1 i2 i3 since we have don't uh, we don't have any any i1 term here uh, only we have i2 and i3 so i am putting as equation 3 so i have formed uh, equation 1 2 and 3 uh, i have rewritten uh, here for our flexibility so this is the first equation this is second equation this is the current equation now i am going to use matrix uh, and find the determinant of the matrix okay so i have written here in the matrix form so it is a coefficient of I1, coefficient of I2 and I3. Uh, here it is the second equation, coefficient of I1, I2 and I3. Coefficient of uh, I1 and it's nothing but 0 because since we don't have I1 term here. So I2 and I3 term is equal to 0. So for the finding the determination we know well in mathematics. So first we keep this uh, term and make a product of these two and uh, subtract the product of these two. Now we uh, simplify this uh, big equation into a our finest equation. So this term I am keeping as it is. Here I am going to expand using the A plus B whole square formula. A square plus 2AB 
plus b square in here we have a j j square becomes as minus hence i have written 1 by omega square c square the minus r square then i come to the second term so here i am going to multiply r into r becomes as r square plus into minus minus so okay minus r square into the remaining term 2r plus 1 by j omega c so third term as it is i am uh, having is equal to 0 now uh, i am going to short out this so here i have 4r square here minus r square becomes as 3r square um, I am bringing out this term forward minus 1 by omega squared c squared plus remaining term 4 by 4r by j omega c. Okay, right. Next term uh, I have written as it is in the previous term. Now I am going to multiply this entire term with this term. Okay, now r plus rc is going to multiply with each term. So r plus rc into 3r minus 1 by omega squared c squared plus 4r by j omega c plus now this term is going to multiply with the entire term 1 by j omega c into 3 r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared plus 4 r by j omega c. Here now I am going to multiply this r squared with the inside. So minus r squared into 2 r becomes as minus 2 r cube. Similarly minus r squared plus j 1 by j omega c becomes as minus r squared by j omega c plus this term is written repeatedly. This is the last term we have seen. Now I am going to separate the real and imaginary parts, so that means segregating real and imaginary parts. So here I have r plus rc with 3r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared. So here I don't have any j, j term, so I am writing into r plus rc into 3r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared. So this r plus rc is multiplied here. So the violet mark uh, written is the identification of the imaginary parts. Okay rc plus r into 4r by 1 by j omega c okay now we come to the second term 1 by j omega c is multiplied with the entire term so when we multiply this with these two terms these uh, two terms becomes as imaginary part and this last term becomes as real part because the j is going to multiply with here so this becomes as a the j is eliminated here right now we in this step what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply the 1 by omega c with this internal terms Okay, 1 by j I have left here, omega c is uh, multiplied inside the bracket, so 3 r squared by omega c minus uh, 1 by omega squared c squared becomes as 1 by omega cube c cube plus, so this term is written separately, 1 by j omega c into 4 r by j omega c, okay, this term is completed here, now, now, now we come here, minus 2 r cube minus r squared j omega c, here the j term is present, so it is written in violet color mark. So here we don't have any imaginary part, so it is real part equal to 0. Real and imaginary parts written separately. In this step, I am going to take the reciprocal of j because all the j term is available in the denominator. I am going to bring out in the numerator. When it is bring out to the numerator, the sign will be changed for that term. Okay. Now r plus rc into 3r minus 1 by omega square c square. So this is the real term. We don't bother about this. Here the j is available in the present in the denominator. Now I am going to move to the numerator, hence this entire term becomes as minus. So minus j rc plus r into 4r by omega c. Similarly, in this term also the j is present in denominator, I am going to move to the numerator, hence this term becomes as minus j. 3 r squared by omega c minus 1 by omega cube c cube. Uh, here I am multiplying both the term, so j into j becomes as j squared, j squared is nothing but minus 1. So this entire term becomes as minus. So remaining terms 4 r by omega squared c squared. 2 omegas are there. 2 c is there. So 4 r by omega squared c squared. So this is already a real term. We have written here. Uh, here I am bringing the j to the numerator. So this minus becomes as plus. So plus j into r squared by omega c plus hfe r c r squared is equal to 0. So this is the final equation because we are going to use this equation as a reference. For finding the frequency of oscillation, what we have to do is, we have to equate the imaginary part to the zero. Okay. So from this equation, I have written the imaginary part. So these are all the imaginary parts that is equated to zero. Okay. From this, we are going to uh, derive the frequency of oscillation. In the first step, what I am going to do, uh, the omega c, 1 by omega c is common for all the terms. So I am uh, bringing out as a common term, 1 by omega c. So here, uh, remaining term is minus rc plus r into 4r minus 3r squared okay so here when we take omega c outside becomes r squared that is uh, written in forward the finally we have 1 by omega cube c cube here also we are taking one 
omega c hence it becomes as 1 by omega squared c squared is equal to 0 okay now in the next step i am uh, moving the omega c to the right hand side becomes as multiplication with 0 so finally it is 0 right here i am going to multiply this one minus r c into 4 r becomes as minus 4 r r c minus r into 4 r becomes as minus 4 r squared here remaining minus 3 r squared plus r squared i have written everything so here only we have the fraction 1 by omega squared c squared that is equal to 0 right so here we have uh, three different r squares coefficient of r squares minus 4 minus 3 and 1 so minus 4 minus 3 becomes as minus 7 minus 7 plus 1 becomes as minus 6 okay so this is written here here we have short out this one then written minus r 6 r squared remaining term plus 1 by omega squared c squared is equal to 0 so keeping 1 by omega squared c squared in the left hand left hand side remaining terms are moved to the right hand side that is that all becomes as positive values now i am uh, moving the c squared into the right hand side that becomes as product okay c squared into already we had um, uh, this term i am taking r squared as a common term so remaining 6 plus 4 rc here we have only one r term so i am uh, dividing by r okay right 1 by omega squared is equal to r squared c squared into 6 plus 4k i am considering rc by r that is ratio of uh, collector resistance with the uh, rc component resistance as k okay right now i have to take a reciprocal on both the sides so omega squared is equal to 1 by r squared c squared plus into 6 plus 4k uh, finally i am taking the square root in both the sides so omega squared becomes as omega so 1 by already we have the square terms so square terms are removed so rc is available this is a single term so it becomes it comes under the root 6 plus 4k square root okay so for finding the frequency of oscillation the omega has to be replaced with 2 2 pi f is equal to 1 by rc root of 6 plus 4k so finally we have f is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc into root of 6 plus 4k next thing we have to find the condition of oscillation so for this take the real part from the equation 4 already derived from the equation 4 we have to take the real part and made to the made equal to the 0 so here from equation 4 i am taking r plus rc into root um, 3 r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared minus 4 r by omega squared c squared minus 2 r cube plus hfe rc r square right next uh, i am multiplying r with this expression then rc with this expression so this becomes as 3 r cube 3 r into 3 r squared 3 r cube minus r by omega squared c squared then I am taking RC, RC into 3 R squared becomes as 3 RC R squared minus RC by omega squared C squared. Remaining terms I have written as normal. Okay. In the third step, 3 R squared plus 3 RC R squared. Then I am bringing this to the forward. So, normal numbers are bringing forward and the fractions are put in the last term. Okay. So, what are the infractions? This one, this one and this. So, these three terms are combinedly written here and 1 by omega squared omega squared and c square is a common term so taken out so uh, remaining term in is in the brackets so remaining uh, normal terms are written here okay so here uh, we have r plus 4r so this becomes as 5r plus rc so let it be equation 5 we know that 1 by omega squared c squared is equal to r 6r squared plus 4r rc so that is substituted in the fifth equation uh, by replacing this one to this okay right next time substituting this in five equation 5 so 3 r squared so i am bringing these two terms like i am combining these two terms 3 r squared minus 2 r cube so remaining terms i am writing here uh, here i am replacing with 6 r squared plus 4 r rc so i am multiplying these two brackets Okay. So, this 3 r square minus 2 r cube, sorry, 3 r cube minus 2 r cube becomes as r cube. Uh, remaining terms as it is I have written. Here I have made a multiplication of two brackets. So, that is written here. This becomes 30 r cube plus 6 r c r square plus 20 r c r square plus 4 r c square into r is equal to 0. So, here I have uh, 30 r cube. So, I am multiplying the minus sign with all the terms. And uh, these two terms are similar term. So I am adding 6 plus 20, 26 RC R squared becomes. So remaining terms R becomes now negative terms. Here, after making this, I found minus 30 R cube here, R cube. So I am subtract, subtracting minus 29 R cube I have. Similarly, RC into R squared terms are two available in two places. So I am simplifying this. 
So here 3, here I have minus 26. So becomes as minus 23 RC R squared. So remaining I have written. Okay. Next, what I am doing, I am keeping this term alone here in the left side. Remaining terms are brought to the right hand side. Okay. So for finding the HFE, HFE is the main factor which influences the condition for oscillation. So HFE is equal to these remaining terms are also brought to the right hand side. Here also we have the common terms RC, R squared, RC, R. So I am taking out RC, R squared. So this uh, numerator becomes as denominator here. Both gets cancelled. Remaining terms, terms can be written as 29 R by RC plus 23 plus 4 RC by R. Already we have um, assumed that K is equal to RC by R. So I am replacing RC by R with K. So finally I, I, I get the condition for oscillation HFE is equal to 29 by k plus 23 plus 4k. So that becomes as the sixth equation. To find the minimum value of HFE for sustained oscillation, we have to uh, um, derive with respect to k this sixth equation. So dHFE by dk is equal to 0. So I am replacing HFE with this uh, expression. So when we make a der derivative steps, this 29k becomes as minus 29 by k square. And this is a constant, so becomes as 0. 4k becomes as 4. So, uh, when we simplify this, I get the value of k is equal to 2.7. I am going to substitute k is equal to 2.7 in, in equation 6. Hence, I get the value of HFE minimum is equal to 44.54. Similarly, I can calculate the gain as well as beta value. So, if k is very small, then, in six, six, uh, then equation 6 becomes HFE is equal to 29. Okay. So, how it is found is k and k, k square terms are neglected hence kf k into hfe becomes as 29 okay right uh, next we check with gain gain uh, voltage gain av is equal to v naught by vb so v naught can be written as minus hfe into ib rc and vb is the base voltage that can be written as ib into r so ib gets cancelled minus minus hfe k is the final answer already we have fixed uh, a hfe is equal to 29 hence the voltage gain av is equal to minus 29 condition for sustained oscillation we know the modulus of av beta it's a barkhausen criterion so using this uh, i'm placing the value 29 here so here it is a modulus so i leave the minus value so 29 beta is equal to 1 i am getting so beta is equal to 1 by 29 from this i can uh, conclude that the feedback factor should be 1 by 29 to achieve the sustained oscillation Thank you for watching this video.